Today we will be making brioche bread. I'm so happy whenever there's bread and bread this beautiful too. It is one of the best kinds of bread because it has butter and butter and more butter. We are going to make a sponge to start. A sponge is basically like a leavening that you make with yeast, some milk, and some flour, and you just let it sit and ferment a little bit for added texture and flavor, and it's really cool. It develops this holy structure that looks gnarly. We got half a cup of milk, just gonna warm it up until it's lukewarm, about 10 to 15 seconds. And then we're gonna do our uh, finger test, make sure it's clean and just until it's warm enough for you to take a bath in, pour that in, and then one cup of flour. I'm gonna use my trusty scale. It's gonna be about 128 grams of flour, and then one packet of yeast, and then you're just gonna give it a stir until it's all combined. It's gonna be quite stiff of a dough. Just make sure you don't have any dry spots left at the bottom of the bowl. And then we're gonna cover this and just let it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour until it grows into a sponge-like texture. You'll start seeing some holes. It'll look wobbly when you shake it. It's gonna look really fun. Oh God, hashtag Mondays. Okay. We got this, Chelsea. See you in an hour. And you can see that the whole structure is there now. The yeasty boys are working on it and it's giving you that lift. Your yeast is active and we're good to proceed. If you give it a smell, it'll have that yeasty smell, slightly acidic. So the purpose of the sponge is to give the bread a little more flavor and to make the gluten softer and more pliable and your bread chewier in that pillowy way. The longer you let this sit, the more acidic it'll start smelling, like a sharp, acrid kind of yeasty smell. So that's up to personal taste. If you wanna let it hang out longer, you can go up to two hours, but I think an hour is a sweet spot for me. Just a little bit of that smell, not too much. It's funky. It's funky. So to this bowl, we're going to be adding six room temperature eggs, a half cup of sugar, and two teaspoons of kosher salt. Yes, that's a lot of sugar for bread, but this is an enriched dough. Brioche is known for being delicious because it's got the sugar, it's got the butter, and it's got all that yolky, proteiny goodness in eggs. We're gonna be doing about 25 minutes of mixing. So it's gonna get pretty intense. Grab your dish towel, dampen it, slide it under the stand mixer so that your mixer will not drop onto your counter or your floor or hit your foot. Another tip, if you didn't read through the recipe and you didn't realize that you needed room temperature eggs and you, you're just grabbing them straight from the fridge, feel free to go ahead and just dunk them in really hot water and let them sit for like five minutes or so. This is a good way to make your eggs come to room temp a lot faster and you don't have to wait an hour for your eggs to be completely room temperature. I'm just gonna crack the eggs into a bowl and make sure there's no eggshells in it and then I'm gonna be pouring it into the stand mixer so that I'm not fishing around for eggshells. Record scratch. I forgot something. I forgot flour. That's pretty important in bread, huh? It's about 384 grams. All right, now we're ready. So once the dough is all combined, you can increase the speed to medium high and just let it go. But periodically, I want you to check in and just use a flexible bench scraper or bowl scraper and just go around the sides and help it along. You don't want like super dry spots to form, especially look for the bottom of the bowl. Sometimes you can see like a little bit of our sponge starter is still down there. We want to make sure that that's getting all combined. And yes, this will be messy, but worth it, I promise. We're gonna let it go until the dough completely pulls away from the sides and it's a ball and then we're gonna add in the butter. So it's been about 14 minutes and you can see that the dough is 
pulling from the sides. It's not as sticky as before. It's like not sludge-like anymore. And I'm just gonna give it one more scrape down. By the way, if you don't want dough sticking to your hands, one great trick is just wet it really quickly. It'll create a barrier and prevent the dough from sticking too much to your hands. This is exactly what you wanna look for. The dough isn't too sticky anymore. It's pulling away from the sides and it's kind of cohesive like this. This is when you know that you're ready to start adding in two whole sticks of butter. Should be soft and squishy. So we're just gonna return the KitchenAid to a medium speed and work in the butter. I would go about a tablespoon at a time, let it whip on its own until the butter is disappeared and then add in the next tablespoon. Don't dump in it all, all at once because that can't emulsify very well and you're just gonna end up with like a whole slab of butter whipping around the side of the bowl and not getting incorporated. It's been about eight minutes. I've added all of the butter, all two sticks, and as you can see, it's starting to get a little bubbly, which is good. That means we have some nice gluten development. It's nice, shiny, and pliable, and it's not too sticky to my hands. It's very well buttered right now. And once you get to this stage, we're probably gonna keep mixing for another eight to 10 because what we're looking for now is enough gluten development to pass the window pane test. So the window pane test is when you stretch out the dough and it gets thin enough that you can see light through it without it tearing like this. So we don't want it to tear because that means that the gluten isn't quite strong enough yet. This is actually pretty close, but I think we need to go a little more. We need to really be patient about this because the stronger the gluten network in here, the chewier and fluffier your bread will be. So your patience will be rewarded. Let's keep going. This is definitely what you should be hearing. Okay, at this point, your KitchenAid should be extremely hot to the touch because it's worked so hard. Let's see if it passes the window pane test, shall we? Wet hands, so I'm not sticking to the dough too much. I think that's pretty good. It's definitely gonna tear a little. It is not plastic after all, but it's been about a good 25 minutes of mixing. This is pretty good. I reserved my wrapper from before just to grease up my glass bowl so that we can transfer it to a bigger bowl to proof in. Make sure you get every good last bit out of that bowl. And we're just gonna wrap it and leave it in a warm place and it'll rest and rise for about an hour or so until doubled and then we'll shape. Well, shape and proof and bake. Oh boy. Is this still Monday? Feels like Monday still. 125, I'll write the time on there so we can keep track. See you in an hour. It's come out looking nice and puffy after an hour. It's nice and jiggly. Yes. And we're just gonna go ahead and butter up two nine by fives or eight by fours. I'm using slightly like in between size, eight and a half by four and a half. These are gonna be very puffy loaves. They're gonna look a bit weird, but completely adorable and endearing. And then we're gonna divide that dough in half. Then divide each half into six equal pieces. And then for each six, of the dough, we're going to flatten it into this long rectangular shape, roughly, and then we're gonna do a letter fold. So folding the top half down towards the middle, folding the bottom half up towards the middle so that it's like folding a letter. Then we're gonna turn it 90 degrees, and then from the short end, we're gonna roll it into a log. You wanna make sure that this is as flat as possible so that you get a nice tight roll. The tighter you get this roll, the more the gluten strands will stay in this coil and when you pull apart the bread, once it's baked, you'll get those nice, nice tight coils of gluten that are chewy and soft and pillowy. So take a piece, flatten, fold down, fold up, turn, flatten again. Starting from the short end, tuck and roll, tuck, and roll. Go as tight as you can, and then rest it seam side down. It's a really nice pliable dough, so don't be afraid to get that tight coil on it. It should be very 
nice and playable. Bread is delightful. It's like so therapeutic. You're gonna take one loaf pan and you're going to decide who goes where. I like to take the bigger ones to go on the outside because the outside gets cooked a lot faster. And then I like to stick the smaller ones in the middle. So I kind of like line them up, eyeball them a little bit. You go here and you're just kind of like pushing them next to each other. As you go, the smallest one goes in the middle. Now they're all happy together. Cute, huh? Okay, one more. Delightful. So we'll cover them. Let them rest for another hour. It could be 45, depending on how warm your room is. And then when they're ready to bake, we'll give them a poke, see if they're responsive. And then we'll bake until golden, delicious, fluffy, buttery, and fattening. Bye. They're proofed. They're puffy and beautiful. And we're just gonna give them a little poke. poke. And once you see that indent is not bouncing all the way back, and it feels nice and soft, and you can see that it's like wobbly jiggly, it's time to bake. You can go over it with egg wash. We're gonna sprinkle a little salt on top. Usually you combine one egg with one tablespoon water for the egg wash, but I had a lot of leftover egg whites left uh, from cookie experimentations, so I'm just not gonna waste an egg. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my egg white. It'll give you the same glossy feel and look, and we can save the whole egg for breakfast another day. They're brushed, they're salted, and they're ready for some heat. 375, middle rack goes in, 25 to 30 minutes until they look deeply, deeply golden, delicious, shiny, and oh so, if you do have a thermometer, it should reach about 200 to 209 degrees Fahrenheit inside the dough. See you in 25. It's time, it's time, it's time for some bread. Yeah. I'm so ready. I've been smelling it for the past 25 minutes. Oh my God. You need to see this side of the loaf. Let me just show you this crazy size. This is my favorite thing about this recipe is how crazy it looks on one side and super elegant on the other side. Chelsea, does this sound hollow to you? Yes. Okay, well, people say that when bread is done, it should sound hollow, but I've never, I don't know what hollow is supposed to sound like, you know, but it, they're done. 30 minutes in the oven, golden brown, delicious smelling, butter in the air. And we're just gonna let them cool for five minutes in the tin. And then after that, I'm just gonna go around the sides very carefully and gently and slowly and make sure that the sides are indeed peeled from the pan before I tip them out. They seem pretty ready to come out. And then if it's still a little bit hot, you can grab a towel just gently. When we divided that dough up into six pieces, it allows you to just tear into the bread and get a slice without getting out a board or a knife because they're already perfectly portioned for you. And there's bigger slices and smaller slices. Let's get some beauties rolling. I'm so happy whenever there's bread and bread this beautiful too. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing the strands of delicious buttery gluten just waiting for me to eat every part of it? I mean, it's already so buttery that you don't need butter, but obviously you wanna go overboard and put more butter on it, right? Like, subscribe, tell me what you wanna get fat with me on next and I'll make it. Just keep eating. Hashtag, just keep eating. Bye. It's like, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year.